Hello, and welcome to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast with your host, me, Hal Coleman, uncensored and unplugged. Pay attention, take lots of notes, because you're going to find out exactly how to get more new customers, more referrals, and grow your business. Hal Coleman has been active in the pest control industry for over 40 years, including owning and operating his own successful pest control business for 18 years. He now devotes his time to helping other PCOs and other WCOs double, triple, and even quadruple their businesses faster than they ever imagined. Be sure to check out his website, pestcontrolmarketer.com. For more information about Hal's coaching program, you can reach him at 770-993-0004 or email him hal at halcoleman.com. Mike Stewart is known as the Internet Audio and Video Guy. Since the birth of the Internet, Mike has been showing small business owners how to get more new customers, increase their sales, and grow their businesses online using audio and video, now with iPhones and Android phones. For more information about Mike's coaching program and his online training courses, visit MikeStewartCoaching.com or email him, Mike, at InternetAudioGuy.com. Hello, everybody. It's Mike Stewart, and I want to let you know about this month's podcast. Uh, we have members of PestControlMarketingGold.com. It's a membership coaching club between myself and Hal Coleman at PestControlMarketingGold.com. And we put out uh, to have our members ask us questions. So here are the questions and the answers from PCOs just like you uh, from our membership site. I uh, hope you'll check out the membership site. There will be links to it. Uh, here in the podcast, uh, on the podcast page, but it's really easy. Search for pest control marketing, uh, gold.com and you can find out about how, how and I work with PCOs and WCOs just like you to help you every month do offline and online marketing that makes a difference in your business. So these are real questions from real users just like you and, uh, Hal and mine's answers in this podcast. All right. Websites. We talked about oh, websites. This is one for you, Mikey. Well, you know, uh, here's the the thing that I that bothers me more than anything. I've seen websites from extravagant, g- gorgeous, amazing photography. Um, you look at it and you go, "Man, what a great looking website!" To websites that you go, "Golly, that looks like that was put together by a kindergarten." You know, it's it's just a mess. And so how do you find the best web designer? Well, somebody who has a knowledge of direct response marketing. And, you know, in this day and age, there's a multitude of ways of making a nice-looking professional website. But more importantly, it better have a web designer who knows how to get the right kind of psychological triggers content that makes a difference in making people make a decision to call you. There's so many aspects of, of, of what you want to do with your website. Number one, it needs to be compatible with cell phones. Did you know that 96% of the business uh, small business decisions are made from people finding your business uh, website on a cell phone? So if your website is unreadable on a cell phone, you don't know how much business you're losing from that. So number one, you want to make sure that bold promises, response triggers, direct response messages, uh, the ability to, to learn what sets you apart, uh, your guarantee. I mean, there's so many direct response marketing strategies that if that content is not on your website, you, I think we found websites, Hal and I, when we were working with clients, that you don't know if they sell puppies and, and, and family lawn furniture or if they kill bugs. You know, you need to make it clear on your website. So you need a web designer who will put the content on there that converts strangers into customers. And that's the best web design. You know, I I like to say, Mike, there's only two different kind of websites. There are pretty websites, and there are websites that make money. And they're not often the same. Sometimes sometimes they are, but, but in most cases they're... They're they're entirely different. So, if you uh, if you if you're if you're asking somebody if you're considering somebody as a web designer, one question to ask is well let me ask you this, uh, how much 
in total revenue have you ever sold over the Internet? And they're probably going to say, well, what do you mean? How many things have you ever sold over the Internet? Uh, and a lot of them are just, it's just going to be a blank stare, dead silence. Well, I, I don't. I don't sell stuff over the Internet. I, I, I build websites for people. Well, okay, well, thank you, you know, because uh, I, I, you built my website for me years ago. I don't know how many websites you've built for me and clients, but I, I, I'll tell people right now, you and your clients have sold millions of dollars worth of all kinds of products from from boat docks to awnings to uh, restaurants, foods, wines, you know how to sell stuff over the Internet. It, as a side business, you also know how to design a website. You see, so that's, that's what I would suggest. Find somebody who is a savvy Internet marketer who knows how to sell using direct response marketing on the Internet and get them to design your website for you. Well, number one, always be in control of your website. Always be in control of every aspect of it. Do not let a web designer have control of your website. We find that horror story over and over again. Learn to manage the content from within your organization. Learn to create content. Uh, Dan Kennedy, who is one of the number one direct response marketing consultants in the world, made more millionaires than anybody I've ever met, said, pretty does not sell. Words do. So does, is the message that people read on a cell phone going to compel them to call you? And that's the designer you want. And so you always build a website that makes it clear to a three-year-old, you kill bugs, and you're the guy to get, bug, get them to call to kill your bugs. So now, I'm going to say something. Let's back up to that one. i got one more thing to add here, and it's really going to ruffle some people's feathers. But they don't know where I live, so they can't get a shot at me through my window, okay? All right. But I run into this every day, and you and I talk. You and I talk about this. Uh, a lot of people now, who are web designers, are younger than us. They're millennials, and they they look for a different look and a different style than than we do, and so they're going to have a tendency in almost all cases, to design you a millennial-friendly website. Now, we're selling pest control to homeowners, and, and, and right now today the latest statistics I, I've read is that 36% of people 34 years old and less are still living at home with their parents. And of the remainder who don't live at home with their parents, only 32% of those are homeowners. So for the most part, millennials do not buy termite and pest control services because they don't own homes. Now, your biggest customers in uh, your your bread and butter customers in the pest control business are going to be people age 40 to 70 and 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 not all of those but most of those are baby boomers uh, they've made a lot of money they have a lot of money they have most of the money and they are homeowners the majority the vast majority of baby boomers are homeowners so they're your your customers lie mostly within the 40 to 70 year olds. So if you get a web a, 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 a website that's designed to appeal to 25 year olds, you're you're you've missed the boat badly because they're not going to buy your services. And one of the here's an example of the big difference: baby boomers want to talk to you on the telephone. They don't want to sit there with their thumbs and try to text you 90 miles an hour or email, they want to talk to you. Uh, m most millennials would rather text you or email you than talk to you. And I just talked to a guy who called to ask me for some for, for advice. Uh, uh, I, I think it was last Friday. We talked for a long time, and I went and looked at his website. His phone number was not on his website, Mike. 
That's I couldn't find his phone number, and he and, but he had right there on the home page, you know, put your name and your your full name and your email address and all this, and click here and we'll chat with you. And I'm like, the, you know, the audience I want to target in pest control doesn't want to do that. Doesn't want to. You don't even have a phone number, and you want me to give you start giving you personal information. And he said, well, I don't want people just calling me. I'd rather have them text me. I said, yeah, but that's because you're, you're 26 years old. But you're in the pest control business. You've got to appeal to the homeowners, and the vast majority of homeowners are from age 40 to 70. They would rather talk to you on the telephone than they would text you on a handheld device. Now, that's just the facts. That's not my opinion, but think about this. Think about this. All right. I can't stress how important reviews are, uh, especially Google reviews, Facebook reviews, and Yelp reviews. And the question is, is it a good idea to ask for them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, even everybody. Here's what the world, I don't care whether you're a millennial living in an apartment or with mom and dad or your 75 year old homeowner everybody searches on google for products and services that they need everybody uses google very very few people use the yellow pages of, of like 25 30 years ago i mean there's a probably a handful still do but the world uses google and the first thing they're going to find in, on a phone or on a computer is they're going to see reviews. And I've got a, I've got a client here in Nashville that he, he's a pest control company. He came up very high in Google because of things that we did for him, yet he had three Google reviews, and all three of them were disgruntled people for things that may or may not have been true. doesn't matter. But he can't calculate the business he's losing by not paying attention and asking for reviews. On the other hand, I have another coaching client, one of mine in house coaching clients, who he asks everybody that he does business with where he's satisfied with the service. Yes. Could you do me a big favor? And he does it through text, through email, face to face, on the phone. He says, it would really help me a lot if you would give me a five star review on Google. And we've got other clients that say, would you give us five star reviews on Facebook? And, and Yelp is important, but if none other, getting as many positive reviews, he can attest that every day there are people that find him in Google Maps on their phone, and they don't even go to his website. The, the 65 positive five-star reviews that he has are posted on his website from Google, and more importantly, they just hit tap to call from Google, and they the reviews his listing in Google, and his phone number is all it takes for him to get a lead. Yeah, and, you know, I've got a couple, we've got a couple of clients that, that some people I'm, uh, don't really know for sure how to get those. I'm going to give you just a couple of techniques that a couple of my clients use, my students. One of them said he, you know, he if he asked somebody, I said, would you mind giving me a Google review? Uh, and, and listen, folks, always say five-star Google review. There are some people who will actually give you a three-star review because they think they're helping you, because they think they're showing you that you could improve. They don't mean to do it, but that's just the way the brain works. They think they're helping you by giving you a three-star review. So always ask, say, would you give me a five-star review? And if they say, well, I, I don't know how to do it. I'd love to, but I don't know how to do it. He says, well, hand me your phone. And he takes their phone. He, he said, now, and then he, he says, what, what do you want to say? And they, he get he just says, hand me your phone. I'll show you how to do it. And he does it for him right there. I have another guy whose technicians say uh, uh, he pays them $15 for every Google review they can get. And they tell the customer, they say, you know, we're not allowed to accept tips uh, at our company. But our but uh, if you like my service, my boss will pay me $15 if you give us a Google review. And it would sure help me out a lot. And I'd really appreciate it. And they, they do that for their technician in, in, lieu of a, in lieu of a tip. So there are all kind of ways to what we call legally bribe your, your client or, or ethically bribe them 
to do something for you, which is get a review. Do whatever you have to do to get those reviews because they're, like Mike said, they're just gold. They're just, they're just gold. Well, all right, there's you. Uh, uh, I'm going to answer it, and then I want to have, hear what you have to say because this really comes under your world. What attracts customers to open an email? Well, the answer is a compelling subject line, a compelling, over-the-top, what's-in-it-for-me subject line that blows me away with curiosity to know what's inside the email. Now, how? Uh, I, I, I have nothing to add to that, Mike. You know, when I was doing my... Uh, my blog, when, when you got me started doing that 15 years ago, when I would send these things out, uh, and, I, and I would get responses to some of them. I, I, I did one about a cockroach that uh, one night uh, m my wife woke up in the middle of the night. She said, something's in the bed. And I turned on the light, and there was a smoky brown cockroach. Had come in. You know, we live in the hardwoods, and we, we get them. And this thing, had she felt it crawl across her or actually felt it brush across her face. So I did a video blog blog post in an email uh, about that, and my subject line in my email was, oh, my God, that thing was on my face with an exclamation point. And I got so many opens, people, uh, and it opened my eyes to the fact that, you know, you got to give them something irresistible. They say, oh, gosh, I can't wait to open this and see what this is about. Uh, compelling, emotional, exciting, curiosity, uh, all kinds, of, but just, you know, you, you hit, compelling subject line, that's it. That's it. Well, you know, I used to work with a pontoon, a pontoon boat sales company like 15 years ago, and we were doing some email. Now, you tell me which email got the most opens. Well, uh, I don't know. Well, I'm going to tell, tell you the subject line of one email we did. Okay. Looking for a new pontoon? Would you like to see a video of pontoon going 50 miles an hour? Which subject line got the most open, Steve? Oh, the 50 miles an hour pontoon boat. Because nobody, everybody who knows boats knows pontoons don't go that fast. And it was an amazing, you know, so in other words, you don't say, you know, sale going on this week, you know, have something over the top outrageous. The the fact people were so curious to go want to see a video, and this was 15 years ago, want to see a video of a pontoon going 50 miles an hour, and that email almost got an 80% open rate because it was just so over the top. And, and then out of that, people watched the video and heard the marketing message, and they sold pontoon boats. Yeah, so if you, if you were doing an email to somebody, and you wanted to give them fifty dollars off of their next service, and you and you put the subject line, get fifty dollars off, or you put, I want to give you fifty dollars. Which one you think is going to get open the quickest? I want to give you fifty dollars. I want to give you fifty dollars. It's just another way of saying you're going to get fifty dollars, but it's saying it in a more compelling way that makes people curious to see what this fifty dollars is all about. But if you say get fifty dollars off your next service, there's no curiosity there, uh, so you eliminate that powerful, compelling response generator is eliminated right there. So. Uh, little simple tweaks in the way you say stuff can make a major difference in, in the, your, your open rate. All right, this is a quick question to answer. We recommend everybody build websites in WordPress. WordPress is a content management uh, system that we build all our websites in, and WordPress allows you to do blogging, which is blogging is just the mere act of adding more pages to your website of content, whether it's news, updates, journaling, videos, you name it. When you add another page to your website, that is the act of blogging. And the beautiful thing about most blogging content management systems, uh, I'm only familiar with WordPress because that's the only thing I recommend, it's the only thing I teach, and it's the only thing I use. But WordPress has a very simple ability to schedule content to publish in the future. So it's just a setting. 
pretty much any blog. There's Blogger from Google. There's TypePad. There's all these other systems. Don't use those. Build your website in WordPress, and one of the features of WordPress when you're putting uh, content in a blog format, whether it's video, audio, or text and images, doesn't matter. That's content. You can say, do not make this publicly available to a date until a date in the future. So, like for instance, Hal and I do a podcast of audio at pestcontrolmarketingpodcast.com. That's a WordPress website. We do it the first of the month, and we program that content to, to be released every Sunday throughout the month. So we, we spend one morning a month producing our content, but it tells Google and the world and our listeners that there's new content that comes out in the future. So that's how you delay it. It's a setting in WordPress, and it's a very easy thing to learn to do if you have a WordPress blog. All right, what are the best marketing items that should be provided from a search engine optimization? That's what SEO stands for, company. And, you know, uh, what, uh, what should be an approximate charge for services? Oh, my goodness. That is an open-ended question that has so many variables that there's no way to really give you a complete, honest answer. But here's the basics. There's two ways of getting people to find you, free and not free. Organic means that you didn't pay for it, that Google said your websites or pages on your websites uh, are found on the top of Google. Nobody cares about three pages deep into Google. It's the, 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 the when people type in a term in the search engine, whatever is on that first set of results, that's pretty much, unless people are willing to dig further, that's called the top of Google. And what you want to do is you want to rank for the words that bring you customers for as many of those words for free. And I've got colleagues who's, who are very successful in the Internet, and, and they say that getting ranked for high competitive terms, if somebody promises you that, I'd be wary of it. And if there's an SEO person on this call, you know, you can argue with me all day long. But I, my colleagues who make millions of dollars, and if you want to text or post or, or, or contact Hal and me and say, who are they? They all say that paid advertising, you know, pay to be to the top for your terms. So what are the best marketing items be provided? Well, you know, no SEO company I know of is going to guarantee you first place for something like Exterminator. It's, it's impossible. You might get, you know, some of our clients get, not, uh, get uh, ranked first for their city and the word Exterminator, their city and the word Pest Control, their city and the word termite control or termite letter, things like that. You have to break it down. But, you know, when, when somebody says, give me money and I'll get, you, I'll get you ranking high, measure what the work they do. And if they don't deliver what they promise, fire them. That's what you want to do. It's like, okay, don't, I don't want impressions. How many clicks to my homepage or my website did you get me this month for the money I spent with you? That's what I want to know from these SEO companies. Because Google will tell me, we showed your ad a thousand times, and if 40 people out of a thousand click on that link and come to your website, Google considers that, well, really, four out of a thousand is all Google will, you know, will, will say is good. If, if we show your ad a thousand times and four people click it, you know, that's acceptable. It's not great, but it's acceptable. So what is the approximate charge for these services? Well, you know, how many clicks are you going to get? You know, are you going to promise me X amount of clicks for X amount of dollars? And if they say, well, we can't guarantee, you know, well, then, you know, I would question it. Because at the end of the day, you need to have what's called Google Analytics. It's absolutely free. It works with your website. Uh, WordPress, it, it interfaces with WordPress websites flawlessly. And the thing is, is you need to know how many strangers came to your website, and out of those strangers, how many called you? If a 1,000 people come to your website every month or 10,000 come, how many phone calls did you get? Because if you don't track where these people come from and how they respond, you're just throwing money to the wind, and you have no idea what you're getting. And so why yeah, – go ahead. What, I, let me just jump in there because this all throws back. If you're going to uh, – uh, to me – a person who is in the SEO business needs to know about response triggers and direct response marketing because 
the first thing they should do is look at your website and know that either if I drive traffic to this website, these people are going to get a lot of phone calls. Or they need to look at your website and say, look, Fred, uh, you can pay me a lot of money, but if they visit your website, they're not, not many people are going to call you because your website is not set up to convert viewers into customers. So we need to do some work on your website first. And that's, you know, that's the difference in a, in a direct response marketer who designs a website versus uh, just a web designer who designs a website. So a lot of people spend money on SEO, and the SEO person's driving the traffic to the site. The site just doesn't convert them. And yeah. so it's, a, it's, a, it's it, one, is a, it's almost like ham and eggs here. You know, you need a good converting website before you start spending a lot of money driving traffic to it. You know, in my in my world of marketing with the internet, I have been taught for over 15 years. Traffic is people who find you, and SEO companies say they can get you free organic traffic, but it's not free because they're charging you money to do the things they do. And some are good, some are bad. I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm just saying, an SEO company says I'm going to optimize your website so people find you then if they do that and they find you and they click on it, the other part of the equation is called conversion. That means that if, if, if he gets you 1,000 people a month or 10,000 people a day to find your website and nobody buys, that SEO was worthless. So if you don't get conversion from your traffic, and in fact, that's the, that's the equation, traffic and conversion. Without traffic, nobody's finding you. Without conversion, nobody's responding. So you make sure that you don't spend money without making sure both sides of the scale are as optimum as possible. So you need SEO, SEM, search engine marketing, and you need a converting website. And without the three of those things, you need to save your money until you get it. Is it advisable for a company to have and promote with Google AdWords more than one website? You know, it depends on the offer. Depends on what you're doing. Uh, I've got uh, a client who is a pest control company, but he has a, a mosquito business. He has a lawn care business that's completely separate. So he has three websites, and he buys different Google AdWord campaigns because people looking for, um, you know, uh, lawn turf care and and uh, uh, killing weeds and mosquito control. He may not want. He may want to have a website that clearly says that's what we offer at this point. But it's all the same company, so it just depends on how you want to divide up your business. The uh, it doesn't hurt to have multiple websites focused on multiple businesses. Any comments, Hal? Yeah, and and we have a client, and I'm sure others that has a pest control business has a website for that. Also has a nuisance wildlife control business. Could lump it all together, but he has them separate, two different separate websites. And and uh, he's just able to maximize his return by, you know, then you want to be a you know an inch wide and a mile long, narrow down that niche. So uh, it's better than being trying to be all things to all people. You know, we used to say a confused mind always says no. So we still say that. Yeah, and and so if I go to your website and I'm trying to get rid of molds in my backyard and I see all kinds of pretty houses and 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 a thousand choices and I don't understand that you can get rid of molds then I may not find the page about molds you know I may go well these people don't do don't get rid of molds it looks like all they do is termite letters and ter termite services and 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 I, I can't figure out what to do so you know the more clarity that you can have it's fine to have multiple websites that are optimized for what you do and Google AdWord campaigns. You can have unlimited Google AdWord campaigns that keep that make sure that there's no confusion. So now here is the last slide and the last question. What is the best social media platform for a small pest control company to use for marketing? Well, I have an opinion on this. It's not, not based on any other thing that the number one website in the world is you is Google. The number two website in the world is Facebook. So Facebook is a social media platform that you can do all kinds of amazing things to reach people. But there's a way to advertise on social media.
but Facebook. People forget that the number three website in the world is YouTube. And YouTube is social media of video. And the, the video, at YouTube, the social media aspects of people liking, sharing, finding, indexing, looking at, viewing, all of the stuff that goes on at YouTube got uh, Facebook to go, my goodness, we need to be video kings too. So, so Facebook created Facebook Live and the sharing of videos. And they love it when you create video content with your cell phones. So what are the, the three biggest social media platforms that I tell everybody to use? Blogging with WordPress, because WordPress is a social media platform. You, what is social media? Creating content that gets shared with people. That's all it means. So WordPress, Facebook, and YouTube are the big three. Now, LinkedIn's important. Instagram is important. I don't know if Twitter's as big a deal. I don't think a lot of people are tweeting about killing bugs, but I'm not telling you not to. Uh, but those are the biggies. And if I were only going to do three, I would do WordPress blogging, YouTube, and Facebook. And that's the, the, when it comes to marketing, there's a psychology of how you market on social media. It's a conversation. And you tell people, here are problems that I know the solutions. And, oh, by the way, you can call us if you want to know more about it. You can't you know. know there's, a, there's a little formula that I want to throw in there that on Facebook, if you, and all social media, if you go there to try to and, and try to sell people stuff, they're not going to buy from you. If you go there to educate them and entertain them, they will end up buying from you. It's just like in networking. You don't go into networking to sell. You go in there to help, and then they buy from you because you help them. So the key to generating business on social media is not to go there and just try to see you can you can sell and make your offers but it's all about conversations and education uh you know uh, the weather's warming up it's termite season so be on the lookout for winged insects especially inside your home or or wings in the windowsill or things crawling up the wall if you see them it could be ants could be termites and and don't say call me and I'll come out there and take care of you. You say call your pest management professional and let them take care of it for you. And if they have a pest management professional, that's who they're going to call. But if they don't, they're going to call you. You don't have to tell them to call you. Tell them to call an expert, and they will consider you as the expert. So it's all about education, not not just sell, 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 sell. That's the key to making the phone ring from social media. Well, Hal, that's all the questions we have um, that we've, and we've got some more that we're going to do next month. Uh, just letting everybody know that it, uh, that all of these webinars are archived at pestcontrolmarketinggold.com, but people who registered uh, will get a replay of this uh, at Pest Control Marketing Gold absolutely free. And, um, I don't see any live questions right now, but if anybody has any live questions, this is the time to ask, uh, put them in there. But we know we've taken up an hour of your time, but hopefully you've gotten some good information. And uh, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't mention that uh, you need to go to pestcontrolmarketer.com and pestcontrolmarketinggold.com to learn more about what Hal and I do for a lot of great uh, success stories. And we'd love you to be one of our success stories. So, Hal, uh, I don't see any other live questions. Uh, James says, thank you. Thank you from Ronnie. People were just saying thank you. Uh, you know, I know class has gone. Uh, I see there, Hal, uh, 13 questions took an hour to answer. There, and we probably got another 30 questions that we didn't get to. Yeah, at least. I think we had about 50 this afternoon. So we'll get to them. But listen, uh, guys and girls, thank you so much for hanging in there with us and letting us share information. Uh, whether we, I hope you can tell by listening to us, we have so much fun doing this and communicating with you folks. And uh, if there's anything we can ever do to help you, go to the website. Our contact information is there. If you want to find out about the coaching programs or any other services, you want to uh, get Mike to give you more information or help you with your website, whatever, we're available. Give us a call. We'll answer the phone ourselves. 
and uh, if you have to leave a message, we'll call you back. So thanks again, Mike. It's been fun as always. Uh, now looking forward to the next one. So with that, uh, we're going to check out of here. Thanks for listening to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes and on your phones and in Stitcher on your Android. But more importantly, go to our website, pestcontrolmarketingpodcast.com, subscribe to our email list to always be notified of new episodes. You're never going to want to miss what we've got coming up next, and you never know what we're going to be able to do to help you with your pest control marketing.